Well, I just got this uh, branding iron with my logo on it, and uh, what better place to try it out than uh, on my new steam box. Uh, so in this episode, we're going to build the steam box, and I'm going to show you the process that I went through to do that. And also, we're going to get some of the frames steamed on the boat. All of that in this episode of The Art of Boat Building. My name is Bob Emser. I'm a sculptor and a boat builder. My sculptures have always been inspired by nautical and aeronautical imagery. In fact, sometimes people passing by my studio would ask if I'm building a boat. I've always enjoyed the artistry of wooden boats. It seems like I've been building boats for over 40 years, and now I'm building sculptures that float. Welcome to the Art of Boat Building. Well, we're getting ready to build a steam box so we can start steaming our frames. And I was just looking in uh, Greg Grizel's book, uh, Building Small Boats. Uh, as many of you know, this is my uh, go-to um, text for building this boat. Uh, in the book, uh, Greg put, has a drawing of a very simple uh, steam box, and I think that that's the design that I'm going to go with. So you can see in the drawing that he's constructed a, a simple box out of um, pine. And I uh, recently purchased some 1x6s for here and some 1x10s for the top, which I think will give me the right size chamber that I'm looking for. So Greg uh, points out that there are four components to a uh, steam box. Uh, the first being a heat source, the second being a boiler, the next being the pipe or the heater hose and the steam chamber or the steam box itself. Uh, so there's many ways other than this that you can do. Uh, he also illustrates one that was made out of PVC pipe. Um, I prefer this method here myself. PVC is pretty expensive unless you had some laying around. It really is not a cost-effective way to go. So I've gathered together some materials. So what I'm going to use for uh, my heat source is a turkey fryer. Uh, as you know, turkey fryers are fueled by propane. So there is an open flame. And uh, when there's an open flame, there's potential for fire. If that is something that you're uncomfortable with, uh, something that will work in place of that is a wallpaper steamer. Uh, and you can pick those up at almost any um, discount store or home center. Um, but I'm going to use this turkey fryer. And one of the nice things is that it came with this pot, which could also act as the boiler. Uh, it would be very easy to take this lid, which is aluminum, and cut a hole in there and put in the proper uh, plumbing fixtures to attach the pipe to. Um, I, however, have uh, this old utility jug that I'm going to use. Uh, it's a galvanized and it had never been used for fuel, which is an important thing um, that it should be a container that did not have uh, combustible fumes inside of it. So I'm going to use this mainly because uh, it's a little sturdier than the aluminum stock pot and also it already has a spout on here that I can easily find some plumbing fittings to pit it over for my pipe. And my pipe, I'm going to use this um, 7 8 inside diameter uh, reinforced um, heater hose uh, to, for the supply to the box. Uh, one of the nice things about the turkey fryer uh, is that it came with a uh, temperature gauge. So this temperature gauge will be very handy to put in the top of our uh, steam chamber so that we can check the temperature and know when it's up to, up to um, temperature for um, steaming the frames. So our uh, next step is to uh, take this lumber and to start building the box. After measuring the oak slabs that I had that were 64 inches, I decided I would make the length of the box six feet long. Now 
Now that I have the two by eights and two by tens cut to length, I need to create a rack on the inside of the steam box. Uh, as illustrated here in Greg's book, uh, this rack will help the frames not lay against each other and that they'll get evenly steamed. I began by measuring the spacing every foot in the six foot length. I then divided the one by eights in thirds. I'll then clamp the two boards together and drill the five eighths holes for the dowel rods. I discovered that my two boards weren't even. Uh, I had lined them up on both ends and I can see it sticks up almost a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna cut that off with my power plane. Now to uh, drilling those holes. Now that we have the holes drilled, I'm going to take a moment here to mark the top so that I don't, uh, so I know which direction to keep them going. All right, now it's just a matter of taking off these clamps and putting it in my vise. Keeping it flush at the top of my table. And we'll screw that together and Screws I'm going to be using are these uh, exterior deck screws. Uh, they're, because they're for exterior, the uh, steam, obviously, is going to be a lot of moisture in there. So. cut these uh, 5 8 dowel rods to 9 and a quarter inches long, which is the uh, width of a 2 by 10 uh, I cut them over on the uh, miter box with a little stop there so I wouldn't have to measure every one of them. And after I um, cut them, I then uh, trimmed them up a little bit over on the um, belt sander. So now we'll just take these pins and we'll drive them in here. Sometimes you need to use a bigger hammer, and a little assistance from gravity helps. Alright, that's the last screw. Um, some of you may have been wondering why I didn't glue this. Uh, as I mentioned before, one, I'm going to be able to take it apart later. And secondly, uh, you don't really want the uh, steam chamber to be completely sealed up. Uh, otherwise, you could build up pressure in there and uh, have a little bit of an uh, explosion. Um, so it's always a good idea that the steam box leaks a little bit. So if it leaks around these seams, it's okay. So it's actually a very bad idea to uh, glue uh, a steam chamber together. There's a small hole for the... Uh temperature gauge. Uh, earlier I had cut some blanks out of the existing uh, cutoffs at nine and a quarter by eight and a half. Um, I attached one of them to the back of the box and then uh, the other one I used as the door. Uh, I added some hinges to it and one of the things that's important to remember here is that you put, attach the hinges with the grain and not on the end grain otherwise it will tear out very easily. Uh, I also uh, added a uh, clasp. So uh, our next 
mission is to uh, flip it over and to get the uh, hose attached to the box. I began by boring a one inch hole about two feet from the back of the box. This allowed me to thread a three quarter inch nipple in that I was then able to put my high pressure hose over the top of. After I tightened that up, uh, I then took the opportunity to drill a quarter inch weep hole in the back. My plan was to have the steam chamber sitting on a pair of sawhorses, but when I put them on the sawhorses, it was too hard to look in to see uh, when I was getting material out. So I threw together some quick legs, and uh, now the uh, piece I can really just see all the way in there without having to bend over very much. Uh, I made the front legs a little longer so it's nice and uh, out of level, so that it's tipping to the back. Um, so uh, next we'll finish uh, the hookup for the boiler. I've got my boiler all set up uh, with a little help from Jay, my local Ace Hardware. I was able to get the proper connections so that I could fit right onto the uh, end of my utility jug. Uh, so then all I need to do is just tighten that up. Uh, one of the important things about this is that this tube does not come down below. Uh, if that happens, then water could condensate in there and stop the steam from going. So you always need to have it uh, going um, straight up. Uh, so I'm going to uh, fill the jug up with some water, uh, move the steam box over uh, closer to the boat, and prepare some um, strips uh, to test it out. All right, we've got everything all set up. Uh, in position here, uh, the boiler is full of water, so we'll go ahead and uh, get it lit. Okay, we'll uh, let that go until it uh, comes up to temperature. Uh, in the meantime, I'll prepare some uh, stock for a test run. I began by cutting down the two inch plus white oak slabs that I had purchased into manageable sections. I then resawed them into seven eighths of an inch square stock and then finally surface planed them to 13 sixteenths finished size. I've prepared uh, several pieces of stock for the uh, frames. Um, this is uh, 13 sixteenths square, which is what the plans call. Now we can see here with this quarter sawn uh, material that the annual rings are running almost completely across here. Uh, and that's what we want because this will be the outside of the uh, frame where the planking will go on it. And so this is where we will put a screw in here. And you can see that that's going to be very strong. If we went this way, then you can see if we put a screw in here that it could split during through one of those annual rings. So we're going to do a little bit of a test uh, to see how quickly they will steam. Now the rule of thumb is is that for one inch of wood thickness you need to steam it for one hour. Uh, since these are very close to three quarters of an inch then it should only take about 45 minutes. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in there for probably 30 minutes and take it out and test it and do that periodically until I sort of see where that uh, magic is because we don't want it to get too soft and we don't want and we want it to bend easily. Uh, so uh, I can see the steam box is uh, looks like it's about up to temperature. So let's get started. Well, it looks like it's up to temperature. So we'll uh, get some gloves on. All right, we'll set the timer for uh, uh, about 30 minutes and see what we've got.
After 30 minutes, I checked its ability to bend. As you can see, it was softer, but not nearly there. So I rechecked at 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and at 50 minutes, which seemed just right. So I installed the first frame. I started amidship at station 10 on the starboard side, where the bilge was greatest. I began where the mold frames were. This way, I could easily line up the frame placement. I then moved to the port side. In Greg Rizal's book, he recommends moving from starboard to port, then skipping a frame and moving to the right of the first, then to the left on the port side then fill in the missing frames in the same order. The idea is to keep things balanced to avoid any concentration of force. I found that planning ahead was important, getting the clamps and tools and measurements ready as the frames began to cool quite quickly once out of the box. On these in-between spots where there's not a mold frame, I'm measuring over the seven and a half inches that would be place it in the center and put a little X so that I know that that's where the frame needs to sit. One thing for sure is you can never have too many clamps. Well one of the things you do not want to do is to run out of water in your boiler. Uh, I have this uh, measuring stick which is just an aluminum tube. I uh, picked up this uh, tip from a shipwright named Lou. Um, so what you do is you lower it down and blow on it and as soon as you hear bubbles then you know that the top of the rod is in the water. So here we go. So there we are. So if I take that and mark it with my finger so I can see that I just have uh, a little more than two gallons in there. Getting a system is important. I placed one frame in every 10 minutes so that they would come out in that order. I soon got a rhythm going. Here is the installation of a frame in real time. Generally it took less than two minutes. In fact, this video clip is only one minute and 34 seconds long. The reason that steam bending works is that the heat and the moisture soften the lignum in the wood. Now lignum is an organic polymer and this is a natural substance that gives wood its strength. Some examples of uh, synthetic polymers would be things like polyester, teflon, and even epoxy. So the steam softens the lignum and then when it's cooled it retains its new shape and it reverts back to its original strength. You can see how important it is to have all of your clamps on the ready. It was really surprising to me uh, how quickly this, these frames uh, cooled off, even on this day where the heat index was well over 100 degrees. Um, it wasn't long before I was able to take off my gloves and uh, be able to put on the extra clamps. Um, at this point I was making sure that the frame was laying flat against the mold and adding any clamps uh, where it was needed. Well, I've got uh, 16 frames uh, in uh, a midship uh, on the uh, mold. Um, so I will continue to uh, put uh, frames uh, on the fore side and the aft side in pairs as we go out. Um, so the uh, next episode, I hope to have the rest of the frames on and that we will then start working on the wooden keel and also uh, attach the uh, frames 
to the floor timbers with copper rivets. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of the new crew members on Patreon. Uh, with your support, it makes producing these videos uh, much, much easier. Uh, if you haven't uh, joined us on Patreon yet, uh, please take a moment to uh, check that out. Um, there's all kinds of different giving levels that uh, you can participate in. Um, any help that you can give me will be much appreciated. So uh, until the next episode, I will keep putting up frames. And um, as always, thanks for watching.